Well, there's always been this discussion about Mountain Blade and how it's inspired in actual history. Of course, Caradia is a completely fictional place and all the factions in it are fantastical and based in fantasy. But there is a lot of inspiration from real life history, medieval history, and today's video I'm going to be going through each faction, who's inspired them, and basically where they've come from. Now, of course, there's no real life counterparts to any of these. There's no one faction that is entirely encapsulated as an uh, actual historical faction. Yet, yeah, some may be close to others, such as the Nords, but in the end, they're all based in history, but all taking influences from multiple different countries and factions back in the day. But still, they're their own fantastical cultures in the end. First off, the Rodox. They're sometimes mistaken to be based purely on Italy, and this is because of the heavy crossbow use. But in terms of architecture and city design, as well as the surrounding terrain for where it is, it's speculated that a lot of it could be influenced by Hungary and some of the Baltic states. Going back to armor and weaponry, the Italian influence is there and it's not going amiss. The Pavi shield obviously inspires the Rodok board shield. You can see the obvious comparisons that you can make. They're almost identical. And of course, the board shield is unique to only the Rodok faction, so it would make sense that this was very much Italian inspired in terms of their weaponry though. But yes, this shield is named after the Italian city of Pavia and it was used a lot through the 14th and 16th centuries by the Italian. But furthermore, it was widely used by crossbowmen to be planted on the ground as a temporary barrier to fire from, and often multiple were actually used in conjunction to create a long walled barricade for the ranged units. This only further indicates the Italian inspiration, but unfortunately the Rodox cities don't actually let you buy pizza, so I, I, you know, I don't actually think there's anything to do with Italy here. Yet it's still hard to ignore the locations of these guys. Doing some research on the Mountain Blade forums and further throughout the internet, it seems that the cities of the Rodox territory are very much against the Italian idea with architecture and building designs that weren't really used by the Italians back in the day, though more often than not built with red brick and plaster, not the black stone that you can actually find in these Rodox cities. But even furthering this anti-Italian side, <laughs> everyone loves a bit of anti-Italian, um, no, so I cannot say that. They do have the weakest cavalry in the game, which historically the Italians were pretty decent when it came to horse combat. So. That's something to also think about. But in conclusion, these guys were very much inspired in terms of their location, terrains, and their architecture in Hungary, but a lot of their weapon and armor are taken from Italian inspiration as well. Now, of course, the Nords are a little bit easy to distinguish, as the name itself gives a lot away. Based more on the Scandinavians, very much Norway, Denmark, and Swedish territories, there's a lot of use of axes and round shields further indicating this, and of course the map placing and bandit counterparts, which are, of course, the Sea Raiders. This only solidifies a claim of their inspiration. Saying that, many Danes or Raiders would not actually quite be as heavily armoured as pictured in Warband, but I know it comes into it with whole balancing and gameplay needs. These need to be taken into account, so it makes sense that there's a larger mix of periods and not just focusing on one time period of the Scandinavians during the Mountain Blade realms. Now, Swadia are one that seemed to be taking a biggest mix from each different faction and country back in the day, but it seems to be mostly indicated that everyone agrees on the same thing. These guys are my favourite faction, yes, the Swadians are all powerful. Oh, what do you mean you can't say that? The, 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 the Nords are way better. Now, it's safe to say these guys are pretty widely inspired, but they seem to encapsulate most of Western Europe as a whole, with not only their troops, but their map placement and armoury. The name seems to be more inspired by the German state of Swabia, yet a lot of their armour and weapons can be shared with both France and Germany. For example, the Great Lance used for decapitating unsuspecting villages, which was used very very much in medieval France as well, as well as some other states in there as well. Now, there is some inspiration from England and other Western medieval cultures, but these two seem to be the most widely accepted as the overall inspiration for Swadia. But what about the Kyrgyz? Now, a lot of people just say the Kyrgyz are inspired by the Mongols, but now really, the Mongols weren't all that was really in the steppe clans. In terms of the actual invasion of Genghis Khan and the Mongols, they weren't the biggest clans there. There were so many other people there. So it seems more sense that they're more encapsulated in steppe tribes in general rather than just the Mongols. But furthermore, the sabers that the Kyrgyz used are an accurate representation of a lot of Mongol weapons during the medieval period. Their armor and the pole arms, however. But taking into account some of their armor and some of the pole arms that actually used, these are more 
Chinese influence, such as the hafted blade, which is commonly used in the Chinese dynasties, and of course other varieties of pole arms that were also used. However, there was a lot of mixes between the dynasties and of course the Mongols throughout history, so it makes sense that there's a lot of Chinese inspired stuff in the Mongols in the Kyrgyz tribes. But overall, these guys were very much based on the steppe tribes, the Mongols and all the other tribes that come with it, but have a lot of Chinese influence in terms of their weapons. Now, I think it's safe to say that the Vegas are pretty much inspired by the whole Russian regions during the time period set throughout the game, or what we can assume is set throughout the game. Not only their placement in the map in the snowy northeast, but of course, the way they dress, the clothes they use, the tactics they use, and the type of troops they have. Now, they do share a lot of troop similarities with the Swadians, but replacing the crossbows with bows, so we can see some influences there, but I feel like that's more a game thing rather than an actual historical based faction thing, but they were also influenced by some Mongols and Tartar invaders, famous for their scimitars and things. Now because up in the north we can see they've got the fur helmets, and because, you know, it's cold. But things such as the Bardish and the Voluge were common weapons of Russia and of course Poland as well. And as we can see in Fire and Sword, in actually one of the uh, the main pieces of art for this, so things such as the Voluge and things were actually used for resting firearms on, but of course that was later during the period. Now even though some of the names in Mountain Blade they're called the Boyars, who were the names of the sort of the lords in the Vegas. These are much taken from Kievan society, and the Polish boyar is more pretty much the same thing which we can see later on in the period. And finally, we've got the Saunids. The Saunids are my favourite people to beat up because their javelin men are just so bad. They've got good archers, they've got good cavalry, but the javelin men are their main staple and they're just not very good. Anyway, furthermore, I'll, I'll, I'll put to rest my love for destroying Saunids on the map. But the name is clearly taken from inspiration from the Sassanids, who a lot of people probably would have heard of before. They were sort of the descendants of the Parthian Empire, sort of around that region. They took a lot of inspiration from them, using the more lighter armour a lot of the time, a lot of cloth, a lot of turbans and headbands and things like that. But because of these turbans and headbands, people sometimes mistake the Saranids for Muslims or Arabs during the time. And of course, their map placement. It makes a lot of sense that they would come from these Arab regions. But if we're going based on their name, I would suggest that these guys were more Sassanids, who of course were not Arab and they actually fought against the Muslims. But furthermore, not just the name the Sassanids inspired by the Saranids, but the weaponry and the arm they used were historically accurate, such as maces. These were common with the Sassanids, as well as two-sided swords and scimitars. And of course, the Sassanid armors were known for being very, very powerful. But of course, there is inspiration from Arab and Muslim cultures later in the time because eventually of course the wave of Muslims came and absolutely destroyed everyone in that region they were extremely powerful so there will be some influences from there but in conclusion these guys were more pre-islamic Persian Empire Parthian Empire places and that's where they take most of their inspiration from. Of course, there is going to be crossover, and it's not entirely solid evidence that this is exactly who they're based from, but we can see a lot of indications there that will show us that this is this is probably the threat. Now, of course, none of this is 100%. I did mention this a lot of the time. There's no one faction that completely encapsulates a part of history, but they're taken from inspiration from every single little part here and put it together to make their own fantasy factions, which I think is the way to do it because you'll get the best gameplay and the best balance while getting the most interesting parts of history in the game as well. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was interesting for some of you. Maybe you knew all this. Maybe you disagree with some of my predictions. I'm sort of looked at a lot of what people have said on Mountain Blade forums and Steam and things like that and done bits of research from parts of history, see how they link up and then sort of made my own conclusion from it since a lot of people have been saying that the Rodox are entirely Italian when really there's a lot of things that actually go against that if you know what I mean so I feel like I've taken bits from other parts of the internet and just put it all together. A bit like how Warband did with each of the factions, taking bits from each parts of history and put it together to make their own unique factions. But I really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you come and join my Discord and we're going to be doing the quiz nights once again. If you want to, it's completely optional. Please support me on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated. And make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. I've never asked that before, but apparently it's really important, so I'm going to start asking it now. Thank you for watching, and until then, I will see you in the next one. Yeah.